Welcome to this uh, expert witness video from Ron Solon. Uh, I'm delighted to have Carrie Underwood with us today, looking at some of the implications of Jackson. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, Carrie? Yeah, I'm senior partner of what I'm proud to still call a high street firm. Um, but I've done a lot of lecturing and writing in relation to legal reforms generally, and of course, more recently, the Jackson reforms. Now, one of the elements of Jackson's, of course, timetables. How does that impact experts? Uh, potentially, quite significantly, there have been only a few cases post-Jackson, which is unsurprising given the time scale. Uh, but in one of them called Guntrip, Abby Cheney, um, an expert had a change of mind fairly close to trial, and the, the Court of First Instance uh, allowed for a fresh expert and the Court of Appeal overturned that and said that it would obviously not be within the original timetable and therefore um, no expert would be allowed because the court timetables had to be uh, vigorously upheld. And one of the points here is that there's been no change, that there has been a slight change to the overriding objective, but it's more about the courts now adopting a different attitude to the use of the powers that they've always had. And so what happens if the report is prepared late or served late? Uh, there's a very real risk now that the report simply won't be allowed in evidence. So there aren't really that many decided cases so far in this short time? That's correct. But if one looks at cases outside the field of experts, um, such as costs management, and really from sanctions <coughs> and timetabling, it, it's clear uh, that the courts, certainly for the time being, may weaken in time, are going to adopt a much tougher attitude to compliance with timetables. Can you just explain to us this concept of proportionality and what's the impact of that on experts? Um, I, I wish I could. I mean, the concept <laughs> which has been around uh, since the Wolf reforms is that the costs incurred in a case should be proportionate to the value of the claim and other matters such as, for example, uh, reputation damage. Um, and you have that seen uh, clearly in the fixed recoverable cost scheme, whereby, as the name suggests, you have costs fixed by reference to the amount of damages. Uh, the problem with the bigger cases is that no court, uh, Jackson, no one's given any guidelines as to whether proportionality means less than half the cost of the case on the basis that both sides would then equal the value of the claim? Uh, is it to be front-loaded to reflect the fact that, for example, an expert's report in a claim worth a quarter of another claim won't be a quarter of the fee? And um, we have no guidance on that. So that's wait and say, basically. Yes, but it does give the courts, if they're so minded, uh, you know, a weapon with which to attack fees generally. So it, it's another sort of weapon in the armoury of and that would include experts? Yes. Very what about so. the number of experts? Do you think that's going to reduce? Yes. I mean, you have costs, um, budgeting and cost management now in claims where the costs are expected to exceed £25,000. Um, and that's, as the name suggests, the courts approve a budget in advance. And I think they will be tougher on the number of experts. One, one case on, on a relatively... A minor point, but it, it's interesting case called Abby Abby Chiel, and this was about the cost of a porch. So it's a very um, minor matter in the great scheme of things, and the judge said that she could decide the value of that and did not need an expert. Uh, the point about that is that decision went to the Court of Appeal, who upheld it, and reinforced the point you're making, you know, the questioning of um, to, to but the wartime phrase, you know, is your expert really necessary? Sure. I think you have been an employment tribunal judge in the past, is that correct? That's correct. What, what's the situation with experts there? It's interesting. They're virtually never used. And I uh, heard a considerable number of disability discrimination cases, including considering um, how long a person, for example, with um, multiple sclerosis would work full time and then part time at the point at which they would be unable to work. So you're talking about a claim 
um, worth over half a million pounds. And in cases like that, normally, um, the lawyers would be expected to make submissions on the basis of academic research showing the percentage of people who would work for five years, ten years, or whatever, mm -hmm. given a particular condition. And I think it's a real issue when you look at reports, uh, in many instances, for example, accountants reports, are they experts reports or are they really work that the law firm could so do? So do you think uh, non-employment tribunal courts can learn from that experience? Yes, I think they can and I think they will. Um, but the other thing is if you are getting into a situation where overall a budget's capped and it's a fairly rough and ready approach, you will have law firms, it's already happening, looking and seeing, well, could we do that work ourselves sure. and earn a profit on it and whatever. Um, and exclude the expert. Yes. Um, costs management conferences, can you explain that and how that might affect the level of fees for experts? The concept is that in any claim where the costs are likely to exceed £25,000, with some exceptions in the commercial course, the solicitors should prepare uh, shortly after the defence is filed a full and detailed budget for each aspect of the claim. There are 11 uh, sections of the claim, and that includes all other likely costs, counsel's fees, experts' fees. And the court then approves the budget, or doesn't, and will make reductions. The benefits are that if you come within budget, on each stage, uh, there will, for all intents and purposes, be no assessment of those costs that will be allowed. Uh, but if you are coming outside the budget, you've got a problem, and you can apply back to the court for variation. Mm. But again, in the early cases, the courts have made it clear uh, that you will not be granted a variation simply because you called it wrong. And therefore, the budget, which to put it in context on a major case, uh, uh, in my firm, we expect that to take between one and two days to complete on a major right. case. Right. And experts need accurately to uh, put their fees, to attend court, dealing with questions, meeting with other experts, and so on, and get that right from the beginning. So they need to understand about budgeting. Yes. They need to get it right. Yeah, because the there's, problems a, later. there's a provision for a contingency of, of 20%, which sure. obviously helps, but it's important. I think it's also beneficial to the experts in the sense that um, if they're getting it right and, and, and accurate and they prove to be within budget, they're going to get more work from people who are going over budget, sure. which will cause a problem for the solicitors. Sure. And paper only assessments, what, what does that mean? Well, that was meant originally to coincide with the same level where you don't need a full budget. In other words, £25,000 costs or less, mm -hmm. no detailed budget, rough and ready paper only assessment. That's been trebled to £75,000. 75, and that means, as it says, you, the solicitor puts in the bill, uh, the points of dispute, reply to points of dispute, the vouchers, the experts' fee notes, for example, and any costs orders made during the case. So the key there uh, is for experts to set out uh, the basis of the retainer and really a detailed narrative bill of the work done uh, and why it's justified rather than simply fee for preparing a report. X. But, and are there any hints and tips for experts in terms of trying to reduce potential reduction in fee on assessment? Yes, I, I think there, there are a couple of points. Firstly, is to do what I've done, as I just said, which is to actually set out in some detail. Sure. So that the judge, without any submissions from lawyers, gets a flavour of the amount of work done. Also to um, blow their own trumpets in terms of skills, qualification, experience and so on. In other words, to get down on paper, it being a paper-only assessment, um, why they're charging what they're charging. That's another point. Um, so what's on the paper is all that's seen. Yes. You have no oral Correct. input. Yeah. yeah. The good news is that the courts will deal with those bills within six weeks, and there's evidence already that they are sacrificing the time for detailed assessments, um, which are now taking a huge uh, time to come to court. So it's better for cash flow. Yeah.
Um, we read in the paper about the number of high street practices going bust. Obviously, yours won't. But um, is there anything that experts can do to protect themselves, you know, having done work and put in a bill and not being paid? Well, there's a couple of points about that. Uh, the uh, stories and rumours, and they're only that, but they're from, from sources such as the SRA and the Law Society, are that it's the bigger firms in trouble now, not the small ones. I think the small ones have had the pain. Um, so if experts think, well, they're dealing with a big firm, they're safe, they're wrong. And Cobbett's and Halliwell's have shown that, and, and there are bigger firms in trouble. So I think experts, whoever they're dealing with, frankly, should get their money up front and should obviously be prepared to reflect that in a lower fee. Uh, but I think the days of deferred payments for experts uh, should be coming to an end. We've taken over sure. a significant caseload from a firm um, that went under. Um, it's the administrator has nothing to do with me, but there will be a lot of experts and indeed counsel who will get nothing. So get the money up front. Yes. So just to summarise, I think the last 12 months have been quite an extraordinary time for the law and experts. Yes. Would you agree? Yes, I would, yes. And I think the next 12 will as well, as the reforms bed in maybe the wrong word, because my view is they're shambolic in terms of the implementation. Sure. And the fact that we're talking here now, months after Jackson's come in, and we both know a little bit about this, um, but we have no guidance on proportionality. No. We have no guidance on experts. So that's very unfair on all people dealing in this field, including experts. Well, Carrie, thank you so much. That's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Well, um, thanks very much for watching. Uh, Carrie will be at the conference.